Hi, my name is Dave, and in this video we'll walk through an example of a foreign currency transaction focusing on a monetary item. In this example, Dinkum Limited is an Australian company and on the 15th of May sells inventory to a customer in New Zealand for $5,000 New Zealand dollars. Note, we're assuming that Dinkum uses Australian dollars for their accounting. Dinkum has a 30 June year end and the customer pays for the inventory sometime in July. To account for the initial recognition of a foreign currency transaction, IAS 21 paragraph 21 is applied. This states that a foreign currency transaction shall be recorded on initial recognition in the functional currency by applying to the foreign currency amount the spot exchange rate between the functional currency and the foreign currency at the date of the transaction. There's a bit to take in there, but we'll also have a look at a number of technical definitions which are worth pointing out. These include foreign currency transaction. A foreign currency transaction is a transaction that is denominated or requires settlement in a foreign currency. The functional currency, which is the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. Foreign currency, which is a currency other than the functional currency of the entity. And spot exchange rate, which is the exchange rate for immediate delivery. In this example, we're assuming the functional currency is Australian, so the New Zealand dollars will be the foreign currency. Um, so when we're looking at the initial recognition, the initial recognition of the sale takes place on the 15th of May, and this would be debit trade receivables and credit sales revenue, an unknown Australian amount. Using the spot rate on the 15th of May of one Australian dollar equal to 1.08 New Zealand dollars, we end up with 5,000 divided by 1.08, giving us 4,630 Australian dollars. So the amount being recognized in the transaction is 4,630. But then what? We know the $5,000 trade receivable is worth 4,630 on the 15th of May. But what do we do with it at the end of the financial year? For subsequent periods, paragraph 23 provides guidance. At the end of each reporting period, foreign currency monetary items shall be translated using the closing rate. So what are monetary items? Monetary items are units of currency held and assets or liabilities to be, to be received or paid in a fixed or determinable number of units of currency. So things like cash or accounts payable and receivable, loans and so on. In this example, the trade receivable is a monetary item. And it's also good to note here that we're focusing on monetary items, um, but non-monetary items do get accounted for differently and it's worthwhile looking at the requirements for them as part of paragraph 23. The closing rate is the spot exchange rate as at the end of the reporting period. Turning back to our example, we convert the 5,000 New Zealand dollar trade receivable into Australian dollars using the closing rate, which is the rate at the 30th of June. This is equal to 1 to 1.12. So to get the Australian amount, we divide 5,000 by 1.12, which leaves us with 4,464. The change is the decline from 4,630 to 4,464 or 166, which means we know that we have to credit trade receivables 166 as it's dropped. But what account gets debited? And this is where paragraph 28 can help out. Specifically, exchange differences arising on the settlement of monetary items or on translating monetary items at rates different from those at which they were translated on initial recognition during the period or in previous financial statements, shall be recognized in profit or loss in the period in which they arise. The key thing here is that any gains or losses go to profit or loss. And these gains or losses happen either when the monetary item gets settled, for example, when the customer pays for the inventory, or when the amount is translated, which is at the end of the reporting period. 
This means that the account which gets debited in this case is foreign exchange loss. And that covers accounting for a foreign currency transaction involving a monetary item.